Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Meet is Vicky Moses, who likes to be known as Kelly Williams. Kelly took one look at Celia and fell instantly for her charms. He told Celia that he was an engineer and she told him that she was administrator for one of her local colleges. What kind of engineer are you? she asked. I work with Rig 6 Drilling Unit as a rig departmental supervisor and sole contractor in supply of crude oil for refining. What's a Rig 6 Drilling Unit? she asked. A 6 Drilling Unit is a department in an oil rig, he said. I work with Sapem Oil and Gas Company. Do you understand the rig? No, she said. I don't know anything about oil rigs. That's why I asked. Where is your rig? Our man resorted to Google. If you've been paying attention to previous videos, you'll recognise this paragraph, although I think the spelling was a little worse last time. A rig is a platform built in the middle of a sea or shore to drill crude oil beneath the earth's surface and refine the crude oil to various stages to obtain gas and other fuel substances for the final consumers to use. A rig is of two type, offshore and onshore. Offshore rig is located in the middle of the sea, while onshore rig is located along the shore of the sea, land. I know that, said Celia. Where's the rig that you're on? I'm currently working at the offshore in Spain, he said. He asked Celia if she was married with kids and told her that he lives in Cleveland in Ohio. She said, I have a son, Dan. He's 25 and he's in Australia with his girlfriend. My husband was a lot older than me and he died three years ago. Will you marry again if you find someone you love, he said. Of course, replied Celia. Do you have a family, she asked. I'm a single father of one lovely son, he said. How old are you? She said, I'm 45. What about you? I'm 48 years old, he said. What are the things you desire in a man? What a strange question, said Celia. Someone I can get on with and who treats a lady with kindness and respect, like my late husband did. Tell me about your son. The name of my son is Frank, he said. He's 15 years old. He's in the school hostel in Texas. I've been here in Spain for over eight months now, working on this contract, and I'll be going home next month. I will love to meet you in person and know you more, he continued. You sound so much like a very nice person to be with, and I'm finding you more interesting. You should come to Durham when you leave the rig, she said. You could come here before you go back to the US. It would be lovely to meet you. What sort of things do you like to do? We have a beautiful cathedral and a castle, if you like old buildings. We have lots of lovely countryside, if you like walking. I will come as soon as my contract here is over, he said. United Kingdom is not a long distance from Spain. What's your nearest part of Spain, she asked. I'm just wondering where you could fly to. Our nearest airport is Teesside or Newcastle, but you might have to fly to Manchester and get a train. I will use the company contractor's private jet when I'm coming, he said, because it's only a private jet that can take me out of here. Let me send you a video of where I work. Goodness, she said. Fancy being able to fly on a private jet. Come to Teesside and I'll come and pick you up at the airport. So he sent her a video. Is that you getting into the helicopter? she asked. This is a video of the private jet taking one of our workers out of the oil rig, he said. I guess it's easy to confuse a helicopter with a private jet, especially if you've never flown on either, which I haven't. This is the oil rig, he said, sending her a photo. Looks scary, said Celia. I think I'd rather be on land. And you knew there was something missing from this video, didn't you? We're nearly four minutes in and you haven't had a sob story. Don't worry, here it comes. Celia had asked why his son wasn't living with his mother. My wife died years ago after giving birth to my only son. Ever since then, my life has been so empty and lonely. How awful for you, said Celia. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with tears. I just want someone who will put smiles on my face again, he said. That's so sad, said Celia. You've not had someone else in 15 years. No, he said. I have been alone for 15 years now. One's though I could spend the rest of my life alone till I meet her again. I just want to move on with my life and be happy again. I feel so sad for you, said Celia. That's a long time. And then he suggested that they move to hangouts. 
Over on Hangouts, he started falling in love. I've noticed that Hangouts seems to have that effect on quite a lot of people. Meeting you is the sweetest thing of my life, he said. What a lovely thing to say, said Celia. You makes me happy. You are wife material. Wife material, said Celia. That's a bit cheeky, isn't it? I'm not a commodity to be traded. Yeah, he said. I don't know how to thank you for who you are. Treating me like a lady would be a good start, she said. Ha ha, he said. You deserve to be praised, my dear. Just a few hours later, and only about 24 hours after they'd first met, he said, I'm with my colleagues discussing about life, my dear. You know what? Meeting you is the sweetest thing of my life. Please, I want to beg you for a favour. Of course, she said. What can I do? I think I've fallen in love with you, he said. I like the way you talk to me, the way you pay your attention to me. Please, I want to make you my wife. Oh my goodness, said Celia. I don't know what to say. You are a lovely man. Oh, thank you, sweetheart, he said. You make my day a wonderful one. That's so lovely, she said. May I ask? I like nice things. Will you be able to provide them for me? You go, gal. Maybe he can keep you in the style to which you wish to become accustomed. Yes, my dear, he replied. I will provide your needs. That's not a problem. I can't wait to meet you, said Celia. Me too, my angel, he replied. Celia asked him if he knew when his contract was due to finish. Yes, he said. Next month, darling. Yes, she said. But what date in June? This people don't want me to go, he said. They told me that I'm a good contractor engineer and I know my job. That's why they're delaying me. OK, she said. It's always good to feel you're needed. But since you're in my life now, I will told them I want to go home, he said. And then Google was feeling lonely. Well, even search engines need friends. So it butted in and said, As the stars keep vigil, may the moon guide you to the land of sweet dreams by its beautiful radiance. Good night, Google. Pleasant dreams. They spent several days making small talk, and our man indulged in several of the usual scammer obsessions. One evening, Celia said to him, What were you doing at work today? My duty, dear, he said, putting things in order. Meaning, she said, you were tidying up your office. Our office is tidy. One of my colleagues is obsessed with making sure we stay organised. Yeah, that's good, he said. So, have you finished cooking? I had dinner an hour ago, she said. So what things were you putting in order? Have you finished preparing your dinner, he said. I think she might have done if she ate it an hour ago. A while later, he asked Celia, what are you doing at the moment? She said, I'm chilling with a cup of tea. What are you doing? And I'm sure you're all going to get this one long before I and Celia did. He said, working and chatting with my missing rip. What's a rip? asked Celia. Sorry, sweetheart, I'm rib. I mean rib. I still don't understand, said Celia. What do you mean by I'm rib? LOL, he said. Have you got it? It was obvious when he said it. Oh dear, said Celia. Is it something I should know? You got me confused, he replied. Are you telling me you don't know rib inside the body system? I do, she said. But I've never heard of someone talking to a rib. And why is yours missing? LOL, he said. But you are my missing rib. Oh, roll on floor laughing, she said. I understand now. The next day, Celia's attention turned to rings. Well, she did tell him she liked nice things. You're my love, my queen, my wife, he said. Can I ask you a question, asked Celia. Yes, sweetheart, go on, he said. Do you think we should buy engagement rings, she asked. It would be so nice to have matching ones, don't you think? Yes, he said, it would be nice. But how can we do it? You know I'm not around. Celia suggested looking online. And he said that he thought it would be better if he bought the rings. Of course, she said. Do you mean you'll buy the rings? Yes, I will, he said. That's so kind of you, she said. You know it's my duty as man to buy the ring and engage you, not you buying it. I love you so much. You're beautiful, so I want to treat you special. I think at some stage, our man must have resorted to Google and asked Google, what do Europeans drink? 
because that weekend, he said to Celia, today is Sunday, sweetheart. We rest on Saturday and Sunday. I just drink a bottle of champagne. A whole bottle of champagne, said Celia. Why? Aren't you feeling really ill? Not alone, sweetheart, he said. I drink it with the workers here. How can only me drink a bottle of champagne? Ha ha ha, she said. I did wonder. Were you celebrating something? Do you want me to get drunk, he asked. N Guest appearance by my cat there. And another one. No, she said. He asked Celia if she drank alcohol. And she said yes, she did. Ha ha, he said. That means when we're together, then we will drink it, since my wife too drinks it. Ooh, yes, please, she said. Not every woman drinks alcoholic, he said. I'm happy that my wife drink alcohol. I only drink champagne is my favourite. Ooh, said Celia, I could get used to that. I like a man that will keep me in the style to which I wish to become accustomed. You go, gal, let's have a proper champagne lifestyle. They spent a couple of days making small talk. I won't even bother to read this one out to you. And the next morning, Celia awoke to find he'd sent her a picture of what appeared to be a cabbage, but was probably meant to be a rose. They made more small talk for a few days, and then he said, I think no need for me to tell anyone, because my contract with them has expired, except that they will renew it, and even if they renew it, I will told them I want to go home. For the past how many years now, I have no wife to call my own. Now that I've found you, I want to come and be with you. Darling, are you there? Good morning, she said. It's almost June. I'm so excited. Do you know when you'll be coming home to me yet? Yes, darling, he said. Oh, said Celia, when? Have they really told you at last? Yeah, he said. On the 20th of June, sweetheart. Oh, my goodness, said Celia. Only three weeks. Ha oh, ha, he said. Smiles, darling. How are you? And how was your night? I hope you've slept fine. Much better now I know when you're coming, she said. It's so exciting. I might not be able to concentrate on my work this morning. Sweetheart, he said the next afternoon. Are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here, she said. I've just come in for a sit down and a cuppa. I've been doing some gardening. No wonder, he said. I've waited for you and expecting your reply. I almost got sick. Oh dear, said Celia. What happened? From not hearing from you, he said. I'm deeply in love with you. Celia started thinking about where they would live once they got married. Or I could come to Ohio, she said. We talked about that, didn't we? I got so excited. Wait, he said. How do you want me to do it? When we get married, you will live with me in Ohio. Yes, she said. I'm getting so excited. I'm sorry. That is my plan. So my son will stay there in Ohio. I already decided I'm going to look for a job, she said. But I can't hand in my notice here till I know when I'm going to come to you. Yeah. I think that's a wise idea, he said. Do you think I should sell my house, she asked, or keep it? Then we can have a house in England, too. I think I might do that. We can come back here whenever we want. Don't sell it, sweetie, he said. Celia asked him to tell her about his house in Cleveland. Obviously, it's kind of hard to describe a house that you don't actually own. So he said, don't worry, sweetheart. I won't say anything. Seen is believing. I want you to see it by yourself. OK, finally, I have a woman to call my own. So amazing. Can't you tell me something about it, please, she said. I really want to know. Does it have a garden? How many bedrooms does it have? Where is it? In the centre of Cleveland or somewhere further out? Five bedrooms, he said. Yes, there are a garden in my house. And the house is in the centre of Cleveland. Sweetheart, do you know I love you so much and I can't wait for you and I to be together? I know, darling, said Celia. I'm feeling the same. The feelings are so strong, he said. The following day, Celia asked, did you do anything interesting today? Hmm, he said, just have a bottle of champagne and I take a rest. That's all. I'm beginning to worry about this champagne lifestyle of his. Don't worry, you will take me to many places when I come, OK? You drank a whole bottle of champagne, she said. I'm getting worried that you're an alcoholic. You do seem to drink rather a lot. No, he said. Don't get me wrong. I didn't finish it, OK? How can only me finish a bottle of champagne? Do you want to kill me? Sometimes I share it with some of the boys. Roll on floor laughing. OK, she said. You had me worried there for a minute. 
A couple more days of small talk followed, and then suddenly our man said, Sweetie, send me your address. Cecilia sent him her made-up address in Durham. And the number to call when I get to Teesside, because I may come before the 20th of this month. Cecilia gave him, well, actually, Annie's phone number. My contract here will be over soon, he said, and I think from next week we will be working on maintenance. Just getting things sorted, she answered, so you can leave. As soon as the maintenance is over, I will buy my ticket and come to Teesside, he said. I really miss you so much, sweetie. Sweetheart, he said later that day, I have a secret. Would you love to hear it? Good evening, she said. Yes, of course I want to hear it. I'm deeply in love with you. That is my secret. That's not a secret, said Celia. We're getting married soon. Ha ha, he said. I know, darling. I just want to put a smile on your face. I thought you were going to tell me you had a date for coming home, she said. Sure, I have a date for that. Next Friday, he said. Oh my goodness, said Celia. Just one week. More small talk and champagne followed. You can pause the video and read this one if you want to. And then, very early on June the 7th, he suddenly said, I can't sleep. I've been putting all my things in other. I'm coming today, sweetie. Sweetie, the maintenance here is over and I'm getting my things ready to come home tomorrow because I love you so much and have missed you so much. Good morning, darling, said Celia. Oh, how exciting. I'm getting so excited. It's unreal. Do you mean you'll be coming to Teesside Airport tomorrow? I can take the day off work. I have to go to work now. Let me know if you're arriving tomorrow so I can book time off. Sweetheart, he said. I said today, not tomorrow. Oh my goodness, said Celia. What time will you be arriving? And right now, he said, I'm at the office, trying to book my flight for the private jet that will take me out of here. Sweetie, I'm so excited too, because I'll be with you shortly. I called your number last night, but was not going through. I expect Annie had her phone turned off. Send me another other number that I can use to call you. That's weird, she said. It's the only number I have. I wonder if it didn't like you calling from overseas. Once you're in the air, I'll see on the flight radar app, so I'll know when you're due to land. OK, sweetie, he said. Have you managed to book the flight, she asked an hour later. And oh dear, I expect you've guessed what's going to happen next. There was a problem. Sweetie, he said, I'm very upset right now. Oh no, said Celia. Why? I was trying to pay for my flight ticket using my online banking app. And this is the respond I get from my bank. I'm so very upset right now, my love. What did your banking app say? asked Celia. Now might be a good time to pause the video and go and make yourself a cup of coffee or tea. Because I think we might all regret Celia asking him what the bank app said. Read this, honey, he said. Following an official memo received from the HM Treasury of the United States a few minutes ago, online with an outgoing transfer of $18,500, and after checking our database, we confirmed the outgoing transfer respectively from Mr Kelly Williams' account to Mr Kevin Douglas' account, was mad for the purpose of private jet tickets. The transfer was put on hold for one major reasons. The HM Treasury has put a stop to the transfer and a hold on the account for a tax clearance documentation to be issued, after which the tax clearance code will be issued to complete both transfers. The tax clearance code will cover the account and the entire sum which will permit successful transfer of the entire sum to another account around the world without any obstruction. The HM Treasury United State is in charge of the issuing the tax clearance code and prior to the fact the account owes the HM Treasury a tax clearance fee of $30,300 which must be paid before the code will be released to complete the transfer. I also want you to understand that our bank policy do not require a fee to be paid before transfer, but the tax clearance code is out of our control, as this will be paid to the HM Treasury Office. All other charges, as transfer charges, will be deducted from the account, and nothing else will be paid by you. Sincerely, Mr Gerald Hawkins, Managing Director. I hope you understood that, because I have absolutely no idea what any of that means. This is the email I got from my bank he said. I don't understand any of that, said Celia. I don't know how US taxes work. 
Apparently, she's not the only one. Sweetie, he said, have been out of state for close to nine months now. So what does it all mean, she asked. I called my bank and they said I to come to United State to reactivate my bank account or I should go to United Kingdom to reactivate my bank account from the bank head office that my bank account is dormant. And he sent her a helpful printout. This is my bank account printout, he said, that was sent to me by my bank, showing that his account was dormant, and that it had $900 million in it. Do you really have $900 million in your account, asked Celia. Yes, my love, he said. I've been on this contract for over nine months and left from Germany to Spain. What can you do, she asked. Will your company lend you the money till you get to the UK? No, honey, he said, because I'm an independent contractor engineer. I don't know what to do. What else can I suggest, asked Celia. Maybe I have to call some of my friends and see if they can help raise some money, he said. Worth trying, she replied. Is the flight booked? Honey, he asked, can you help me with the money to book my flight? Just the flight. I don't think I have that much money in my account, said Celia. Sorry. When I get to the UK, I will sort the bank. Sweetie, how much do you have? I'm thinking of how I can get out of here, my love. Hang on, she said, let me look. I have £9,750 in my savings account. I don't know what that is in dollars. Sweetie, he said, can you help me with it? I will pay you back when I get to the UK. Will it be enough? she asked. Call me cynical if you like, but I expect it will be. I have a wristwatch, $5,000, he said. I'll go round the oil rig and look for someone to buy it. OK, she said, let me know. Where are you at the moment, my love? I'm at work, she said. When is your free time today, honey? I can stop for lunch in an hour, she said. Can you send me the money at your lunch time so I can look for someone to buy my wristwatch right now? Yes, she said, I should be able to do that. Where do I need to send it, she asked, to the airline? No, sweetie, not the airline. I have to pay all the money at once. Do you know how to send Bitcoin? Bitcoin, said Celia. No idea. Can I use my banking app for that? What city are you in, he said. Let me give you Bitcoin location in that city and show you how to send it. I'm in Durham, she replied. You know that. And there won't be time for me to go into town at lunch. I need to be able to transfer the money online. He sent Celia a helpful map with the location of all the Bitcoin machines in Durham. She told him she wouldn't have time to go into town at lunchtime and said she needed to be able to do the transfer online. OK, sweetie, he said. When you see it, let me know so I can send you my Bitcoin wallet. You will send the money to my Bitcoin wallet. No, she said. I don't think I can even use the card in a Bitcoin machine. Oh dear, what else can we do? because HSBC apparently have blocked cryptocurrency transfers. OK, sweetie, he said. You can withdraw the money and buy the Bitcoin with cash. You can send the Bitcoin with cash, my love. Wrong. No, she can't. Do you have a mate on the rig who I can send the money to? She asked. Yes, honey, he said. She said I won't be able to go into the bank before it closes, and I think the limit on cash withdrawals is either £500 or £1,000. I'm not sure because I haven't ever tried. Let me get a bank account details for you to send it. So Celia hopped online to find that the HSBC daily withdrawal limit was £500. So there's no way she could have sent him the cash as Bitcoin. If you do bank transfer, he said, how long can I get the money? However long it takes to transfer, she said. It usually goes immediately, I think. And so, finally, he sent her the bank account details of a money mule in London. Celia ghosted him. Our man carried on whining for days. And then, well, I won't tell you, and then, because I think I'm going to put that in a separate video. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, please share it, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again in another Keep Safe on the Net video on YouTube.